So, okay, let's plug in. What is the molar mass of hydrogen? 2.016. So density, this is going to be for hydrogen, 2.016 grams per mole. Plug that in. What is the pressure? The pressure is 1.00. We'll just do it exactly one atmosphere. R is 0 0.08206 liters times atmosphere over mole Kelvin. And T is 298 Kelvin. So the Kelvin cancel, the atmospheres cancel, the moles cancel, and that should give us grams per liter. That should be our units. And so as far as grams per liter goes, um, let's just go ahead and punch that out. I get the 2.016 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 298. And um, actually, it's just the units. Units, of, this is going to be 0 0.0824 to 4 grams per liter. That would be it. For nitrogen, did somebody get nitrogen? For nitrogen, you know, it's the same thing. We just changed the molar mass to 28.02 grams per mole, but everything else is the same. And so let's go ahead and calculate nitrogen 28.02. Unless, what, what did you guys get for nitrogen? Oh, for the density. I get, I get 1.145 grams per liter. And so this is about a thousand times less dense than water. One, you know, water is one gram per milliliter. This is a gram per liter, and that's kind of what we expect. We expect the densities of gases to be about one gram. But hydrogen is very low density, so that's why hydrogen's density is quite, quite small. All right, so that's density. Um, the next specialty uh, calculation that we do is called the molar volume. substitute that in here, PV over RT. Here. And then uh, this is just going to be, uh, well, the V's cancel, and then we'll invert and multiply RT over P. So if we do the um, uh, molar volume, one atmosphere and um, 298 Kelvin. The molar volume we calculated earlier came out to 24.5 liters. That's it. We just plug in RT over P here. That's the first example. Let's do the molar volume at one bar and 298.15 Kelvin. earlier calculation. So the molar volume is just going to equal R, 0 0.08206 liters times atmosphere over mole Kelvin times T. 298.15 Kelvin divided by P. P is going to be one bar. But when we look, bars and atmospheres don't cancel. And so we need the conversion from bars to atmospheres. And 
so gee, the conversion is going to be um, pretty much it's going to be given and uh, the conversion is this if we go back to the earlier chapter one atmosphere is equal to 1.01325 bar So let's calculate the molar volume of the gas here. So 0.08206 times 298.15 divided by our times, oops, times 1.01325, 24.79 liters per mole. And so a bar is a little bit smaller than an atmosphere. And so the atmosphere is a little bit higher pressure, bar is a little bit lower pressure. So as a bar is a little bit lower pressure, the gas can expand a little bit more. And so it's a little bit more. It was instead of 24 and a half liters under one atmosphere, it's 24.8 liters at one bar. There's one more. Molar volume at STP. STP stands for standard temperature, which is equal to zero degrees C, and pressure, which is equal to one atmosphere. So standard temperature and pressure, zero degrees C and one atmosphere. So if we do the molar volume here, the molar volume is equal to R 0 0.08206 liters times atmosphere divided by mole times Kelvin times T, 273.15 Kelvin divided by P, which is going to be one atmosphere. Let's do exactly one atmosphere. So what does that come out to here? So point zero eight two zero six times two seventy three point one five twenty two point four one twenty two point four one four liters per mole. Many people memorize this. Many people memorize that there are twenty two point four liters of gas per mole at SDP, including me. When I was taking intro chem, I had to memorize this number, 22.4 liters per mole. How many times have I used it since then? Zero. So uh, it was a waste of memory. It's not, it's not useful because um, the reason it's not useful is how many people work at zero degrees C? Does anybody work in a lab that's set with a thermostat set at zero degrees C? All right, let's take a look at this one. Um, so those are our specialty calculations. Let's just look at some general examples here. Um, what is the pressure in atmospheres of a helium filled 0.77 liter balloon if it contains 1.0 grams of gas at 22 degrees C? So normally, with a problem like this, we just look, look at the volume 0.77 liters. What else do they give us? They give us the grams. Um, so what we want is we want the N. N is not the number. The N is the amount, but we don't want the amount in grams. So we got 1.00 grams. Or 1.0 grams of helium. And so we'll have to convert that to moles. And so we'll need the molar mass of helium. The molar mass of helium is 4.003, 4 4.003 grams of helium per mole. And so the grams cancel, that'll give us the moles of helium. This is going to come out. 
So we got B, we got N, and we got T. T is 22 degrees C. We can't use Celsius temperature. We have to convert it to Kelvin. And so this is going to be 295 Kelvin. Uh, just add it to 273. So we have B and T. What's missing? P. So P is equal to NRT over B. So just plug in those. They converted everything. Right? And you get. Um, 7.9 atmospheres. Check your answer there. Just plug in the value. Here they're using this equation with the molar mass. Do you see this? But we don't really need to use this equation with the molar mass. You know, we want to keep the number of equations to a minimum. We don't want a specialty equation for every single problem. And so I would have solved this just using our standard then just convert from grams to moles helium. So uh, the different here's the gas density. What is the density of helium? Okay, we already did some density calculation. The density of helium, we just need the molar mass of helium. Put that in. This is the density of the molar mass times P divided by RT. So we look at the molar mass of helium. The pressure is different though, the pressure is in tor. And so what the what their book does is they use a different R value. This is the R value expressed in liters tor per mole Kelvin. But I don't want to memorize too many R values. Do you want to memorize an R value for every unit you have? You know, because let's say if you have um, bars, then the R value is different. If you have milliliters, then the R value is different. If you have Tor, the R value is different. And so rather than memorizing R, you know, different R values depending on the units you use, it's easier just to memorize one R value and then convert the other units. And so here I use the R value for liters atmosphere per mole Kelvin rather than the R value for bar. Do you know what the R value for bar is? Let's uh, do that over here. But I wouldn't do this, and I wouldn't memorize this number. And so what they're saying is um, basically do this. If we know that we have 0.808206 meters times atmosphere per mole times Kelvin, and then we know that there's 1.01325 bar per atmosphere, then the atmospheres cancel. And that gives us a new number for R. And the units are going to be different. And so what is the, the value of R with these units? 0 0.08206 times 1.01325. It comes out to um, 0 0.08317 liters times bar over mole per Kelvin. So I switch from atmospheres to bar here, I get a new number. Do you want to memorize this number? Yeah? And then, do you want to memorize this new number here? Because now we're switching not to bar, but we're going to switch to tor. So this is liters tor per mole Kelvin, 62.4. Do you want to memorize that number? No, it's, and so it's just too many, you know, too many. Um, variations. So I don't. I, we don't memorize a number. You know what's easier to do? What's easier to do is just to convert it. If we're given atmospheres or if we're given some other unit, we convert it to, you know, if we're given atmospheres, it's perfect. If we're given bar, we convert bar to atmospheres. If we're given tor, we convert tor to atmospheres. And so there's only one number that we're going to remember. It's this number here. We're not going to memorize all the variation of this. Does that make sense? And so that's one thing you'll notice about your book. Okay, the book talks about molar volume here. We already talked about molar volume is equal to RT over P. This 
this is the molar volume um, under the new stand, STP. The, new, the old STP is one atmosphere, was the pressure. The new STP is, can you see? The pressure is not one atmosphere, it's one bar. And so one bar is a little bit smaller pressure. And so the volume is going to be a little bit bigger. Rather than 22.4 liters, it's going to be 22.7 liters. And so probably nowadays, you know, in the old days, people had to memorize this. But probably nowadays, people are memorizing this. 22.7, but it's still not wrong worth it. You know, the number to memorize is this number here. Why is this the number to memorize? This one or this one? You know, 24.5 or 24.8? Why? Because that's under standard conditions. Standard conditions of atmosphere in the U.S. Standard conditions of one bar in the rest of the world. What is the molar volume of air? The molar volume of air. Um, depends on RT over P. So the molar volume of any gas just depends on RT over P. Molar volume, um, these numbers come in handy uh, for stoichiometry. And so let's look at gas stoichiometry next. Time is it? Twenty-two. Basically, for gas stoichiometry, um, we go from volume here. Gas stoichiometry one, we, if it's possible, use Avogadro's. If possible. If it's not possible, let's say there's solids and liquids present, then what we have to do is um, we do this in the map. You know, the volume of the gas, we can go to um, moles of gas, and then moles of some other gas. So this will be moles of gas A. Will be moles of gas B, and then uh, we can go to volume of gas B. And so uh, the way we go from volume to moles is there's two ways. One, we could just use the ideal gas law, and so that would be N is equal to PB over RT, or B, we use the molar volume. Use molar volume as a conversion factor. Conversion factor. And so well, let's look at this. What volume of hydrogen measured at STP um, can be released by 42.7 grams of zinc as it reacts with hydrochloric acid? So uh, in this case, um, you know, we have the balanced chemical way in the zinc solid plus 2HCl yields um, hydrogen gas plus zinc chloride. So we got aqueous solutions. We can't do volume to volume. So we can't use Avogadro's law because um, we can do volume of gas to volume of gas in Avogadro's law using just the ratio. So, so it just be volume of A gas A goes to volume of gas B using the stoichiometric ratio. So in this particular example, we can't do that because we're going from um, 42.7 grams of zinc. So we'll go from grams of zinc to moles of zinc. 